Coming soon to video cassette. Hello, welcome back to Almost Cult Classics, the podcast, Sidetracks Edition. My name is Joe Ramoni, and I'm sitting here with my friend and co-host, Ryan Lancello. Hey, hey. Now, Ryan, we're recording in my childhood home. Sure are. Because, as some of our listeners know, it's the middle point between you and I. So we sometimes come here to record. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it would be fun. I went down in the storage I have in the basement, and I tried to find some VHS tapes from my youth. Oh, the Ramoni that, vaults. That might be um, interesting to talk about. Okay. Uh, these aren't just like your standard run of the mill. Some of them... Because I don't know if you've been following this, but like VHS tapes in good condition that are still sealed are selling for like thousands of dollars Get now. The fuck out I of swear here. to God. So maybe some of these will be. Gotta I, love collectors. I have a few that won't be, but you you haven't seen these. This I is, don't know. This You're is uh, this is this is absolutely. I'm being surprised here, folks. So, so I'll, I'll pass them to you, and you can explain what you're looking at, and then okay. I'll chime in. Okay. What do we got here? We have Pinocchio. Oh my God! Is that James Coburn on the cover here? He looks black. Or Puerto Rican or something. I don't know if that's him. I just, they just might have his name in the billing. Or is he? Oh, because Carl Reiner's playing Geppetto. Yeah. This and is, you have Paul Rubens here as uh, uh, Pinocchio. I have... What is this? This is an episode of Fairy Tale Theater, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Oh, is with. this the Shelley Duvall thing? This is Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale oh, Theater. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and this is a... Uh, I'll look it up online now. Uh, 1984, this is from. And it's uh, Pinocchio. And it's... Yeah, James Coburn plays the gypsy. So that... Might be him, dude. His skin is super dark, and that—that's him. Um, and then you also have uh, Carl Reiner as Geppetto, Paul Rubens as Pinocchio, Lainey Kazan as Sophia, the Blue Fairy. Uh, Jim Belushi is in it as Mario. Oh, your favorite! And uh, Michael Richards is also in it. No, is he really? Yeah, he plays Vince. Can I ask you something here? It's yeah. just written by Mark Curtis and Rod Ash. Can you look that up? That Mark Curtis name sounds familiar. Mark Curtis. Uh, yep. Well, you'll be surprised to know, Ryan, he wrote five episodes of the TV show Sledgehammer. Whoa! Wow, yeah. were we not just talking about we that? Were. That's crazy. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, also directed by the great Peter Madak, that uh, Pinocchio there, who directed one of my favorite horror movies of all time called The Changeling with George C. Scott, mm. uh, as well as... What is that? He just did a bunch of movies in the 70s. He's a cool director. So that, that's the amazing thing about fairy tale theater. I don't know if you saw much of it, but she really did get interesting directors... That's I don't cool. know how so much how much she had to do with it anyway. I, I, beyond hosting it, I don't know if she produced it or wrote for it or what the deal is. But God, I'm looking at the year. Yeah, I probably producer. did see a couple of these just as a, such a young kid. That, you know, you don't I even. Look at that. Uh, There's a little book uh, flap opening. Oh, that's there. interesting. A little, little tail. Yeah, the front of the VHS case flips open, which I don't, I've never really. I'm sure I've seen that before, but. Oh, Michael Richards plays like the fox. Mm-hmm. I say. Oh, Vincent Schiavelli is the priest. It's a good cast, man. Yeah. All right, now, I did grab a couple DVDs just to... Yeah, yeah, mix it up, sure. I don't know if you've ever seen... Bob the Butler, <laughs> starring Tom Green and Brooke Shields. I do remember this movie. I never saw it. Doesn't that seem like a family guy joke? Uh, yeah. It doesn't seem like it'd be real. Like, Tom Green plays an unconventional butler who's going to bring this family closer together. You gotta love the poll quote on the back here. Mrs. Doubtfire meets Uncle Buck from Quipster's Movie Reviews. Quipster's Movie what Reviews. I guarantee, I guarantee that he doesn't have a website anymore. No, but you're probably right. Screenplay by Jane Walker. And I, Jesus Christ. It was Gary Siner, the director. Tom Green, man. I remember when I was a kid, the Tom Green show was we the funniest, funniest thing. We would die laughing at that. Uh, he, wow. Also, talk about falling Also off. a little um, ahead, of, ahead of the curve with podcasts. Because he, he was, was doing that right, fucking that home call-in show. Yeah. From his living room. Yeah. Destroyed his house to yep. do that. And uh, I remember you can go on and watch live and leave comments and mm-hmm. call in. He mm-hmm. really was. He was, a, he was very innovative when it came to technology and that type of shit. I have, yeah. I mean, like he gets, he, he, I mean, he, he never went beyond, you know, his shtick really. But he, he's another one that was, you. he could not have been more big. And he, what's he do? It's like, Tom, you're huge. You can do anything. I'm going to make Freddy Got Fingered. Which we probably, that's another one I've never seen. We should, we should probably do the show. You'll, you'll hate it, but you, you, might res- so? you might respect the essence of it. Probably as far probably. as far as a film, yeah. there's not much to like. It's not It's not a film. I mean, like, Daddy, would you it's like, like ex- some such? It's like an experimental piece. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but okay. Have, we, whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you seen Bob the Butler? Yes. And? It's awful. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was, this was made in... It's got to be like 2005, I want to say. Did he get a theatrical release? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. 
Likeable Bob, Tom Green, can't hold a job and alphabetically finds employment using the phone book. Once in the B's, he stumbles upon Butler School and is soon hired by Anne, Brooke Shields, single mother of two and business owner who desperately needs help. But trouble ensues when Bob is in charge in all the household duties and Anne's family will never be the same. Mm -hmm. There's also a hamster, which I'm assuming at some point gets out. Uh, Yeah, I would imagine. He's also on the front. He's like, hey, kids, want to see my Richard Gere impersonation? <laughs> he, just, he just plays awful pranks on the kids. Yeah, that's, that would be an awful prank. All right, right. what do we got next here? Scared, silly, the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald. I have a feeling, oh, this is that awful, classy, supo animation style, too. They did them for a little bit. They were doing McDonald's, was not satisfied enough with dominating... The food industry. Uh, yeah, they were they were going to do children's films. I this this really kind of rings a bell. I wonder if I've seen any of these. The, this was always so weird to me. Like if you went to McDonald's and got a VHS tape, they like, sold VHS kid, tapes for a while. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like whoa. But they were actually like a surprisingly good deal. I remember we had Mr. Mom. We had a copy of Mr. Mom that came okay. from McDonald's. It looks like the animation style of um, as told by Ginger. Do you remember that show? That's classy Super. Oh, okay. Which uh, years later I find out they have. Like they were doing the Simpsons too, and this is Rugrats, right? Uh, what's the other fucking stupid one? Power, uh, Rocket Power, Rocket Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All real monsters. If anyone remembers that. Oh yeah, man, dude, you got some, uh, you got some chestnuts in here. <laughs> Almost fell reaching into the bag. Uh, what do you got? Here's one. Out Maybe. on a limb with Matthew Broderick. Is that Jennifer Grey? I see there. I don't think it's Jennifer Grey. Who is this? Is it Heidi King or Kling? Man, Matthew Broderick and Jeffrey Jones, really, they were, they should have just kept making movies together. <laughs> make, it, make a team. I see a John C. Riley in the credits yeah, Very here. young John C. Riley's in it. That was my first introduction to him. This, that's, this is a wacky movie. Hold on. I love this. So it's, it's out on a limb. This is out of print, by the way. It should be called because you can't get this on DVD. <laughs> he's sitting up in a tree, and he seems to be somewhat naked with the uh-huh. exception of a necktie. He's got a necktie on. But he's holding a white sign in front of him and it says Matthew Broderick is really up a tree in this outrageous Uh, comedy because he's literally on the poster he's out on the limb and also if you look under him on the poster it's also him like they're above the the same characters yeah I love when they do that that's funny Uh, so what what, what, Uh, so this movie as far as (laughs) (laughs) you want to read the back oh fuck it yeah read the back Manhattan stock Ruger Bill Campbell Broderick comes to the small logging town of Buzzsaw in order to help his little sister, whose stepfather, the mayor, is being blackmailed by his own evil twin brother. But soon, it's Bill who needs help when a gun-toting redhead named Sally, Heidi Kling, steals his car, his clothes, and his wallet, which contains the phone number he needs to close a $140 million deal. Okay. He's really out on a limb. The film from Academy Award nominee Francis Weber, who did La Cage au Follet, Obviously, the yep. original Birdcage. Right. The Tall Blonde Man with One Black Shoe. What? The, why does that ring a bell? What is it called? The Tall Blonde Man with One Black Shoe. I know I'm thinking of the Tom Hanks movie, The Man with One Red Shoe, but I'm looking at the, I'm looking at his filmography, and actually, this is he is a. I can't tell you how many films of his were original. Like so many of his films have been remade as American films. He's one of them. So yeah, like so you say said, Francis Weber. That sounds that rings a bell. Le Cage au Fale. So you say yeah, Cage. Yeah. Le Cage. Oh, yeah. And then the sequel. I know there was a sequel. Uh, he did this movie with Gerard Depardieu and Pierre Richard called Le, La Chevre, which Le, translates to Gerard Depardieu. Depardieu. La, La yeah. Chevre. The Chevre. Um, he did the toy, he, the the film that the Richard Pryor. We got to do that yeah, one. He, he did, did that? that. He was. He did the original. It's we got to come of, back to that. movie. He did the movie that the man with one red shoe is based on. Oh, he, that's the tall blonde man with one black shoe. There we okay. go. All right. He also did um, the Fugitives, which was later turned into Three Fugitives with uh, Nick Nolte and Martin Short. Wow. Yeah, he's done a lot of comedies, and also Dinner for Schmucks is him. Oh, the original. Okay. The original. Yeah. So he's like a. So this guy's got bona fides. Yeah. Now, this movie... You've got to look at John oh, C. Shit. Riley looking like a fat Tom Waits also, on the back there. Also, Father's Day with uh, Robin Williams and Billy Crystal. Sure, yes, yeah, of course. A, based on a French film. Yeah. So, what's funny about this movie is that I could be wrong. I think it's this movie. I haven't seen it in years because you can't watch it. Um, a little girl is telling the movie story to her school. Like, this is what happened over my summer vacation. Yeah. And there's like a Siskel and Ebert kid. Two kids that keep critiquing it as she goes on. That's fucking And at old. one point, they try to get up and leave. And the teacher's like, no, you guys can't leave. This is a school. You have to come back. 
That's like hilarious. actually that plot point doesn't make much sense. And like I agree. Is it any good? I remember really liking it, but I haven't seen it in years. I could see it being good. It sounds okay. I feel like there's little. I mean, Matthew Broderick. Here's an interesting film. So I think I have seen this. It's been a while. I for might me. be confusing it with Almost Heroes. We have Wagons East here. You have two overweight comedians on knocking on death's door appearing in these movies. John Candy and Richard Lewis. I remember enjoying this. It's better it's, than Canadian it's, Bacon. Yeah, I'm which look, I will say. This is not good, but no. I re- it's one of those movies where you know it's not, but you're still right. like, I like this. It, it would be remembered far more fondly today if it didn't kill John Candy, because the mm. idea of Richard Lewis playing Richard Lewis in the Old West, yeah, it's funny, is better than what Seth MacFarlane did in a million ways. Like yeah. it's so funny that he's just playing Richard Lewis as a cowboy. It's great. This is an okay movie, from what I remember. From what I remember. Also, um, an actor I really like, Gellard Sartain, is in it. Yeah. He's a great I, character you're, you're, actor. John C. McGinley plays a good part in it. Robert Picardo. Robert Picardo. Always fun. Yep. For our Star Trek fans. And uh, if you yeah. turn, turn the box around, you see that dedication at the bottom there. This motion picture is dedicated to the memory of Richard Nixon. What's that oh, about? That's, that is a weird, that's a weird poll. <laughs> no, it's John Candy. <laughs> Which uh, often you don't see dedications on the back of VHS boxes. That is so that true. Is kind of... That is it's that is interesting. Yeah. Wow. Man, oh, it's so weird holding a VHS. Okay, so I have to do this for you. Well, it's not even that. Look, it's from the Shell Party Store in Shelby, Ohio. Where is it from? The Shell Party Store. I've never been there. 149 Mansfield Avenue in Shelby, Ohio. Should we see if it's still around? Yeah, but here, look, look. Did you not do this as a kid? Oh, yeah. You the little click button. it back and look at the film. Well, that, but... Just clicking it. Man, I love little tactile clicky buttons. I used, to, I used to really fuck up some film. Oh, man. VHS. I don't know. Check out this one. This Pretty one cool. is, uh, is still in the shrink wrap. Oh, Flintstones. Sure. I, this is one we should probably revisit because it really is. It's a masterpiece of set design. What was the thing you just... Oh, Popeye. Yep. This falls into that same category where... Honestly, I think this is a better movie, but... I could be wrong. I, I I do like how you're starting to get more into Altman though. From that, I'm I'm happy with that. Getting getting love getting some accolades for. Well, Altman. they look so good, and like you know, I that's have, uh, Drew Struzan. No, no, but like, I, I had and at this point in time, everyone liked Rosie. She wasn't the you know the maniac as Betty Rubble. Like I don't know, like, eh, not great. But this movie was pretty good. Hell Listen, not not to um a dish, not not to alarm you, but I found a copy of that on eBay, Ryan. Currently going for seven seventy five, so hundred or seven hundred? No, oh seven dollars yeah. and seventy five cents. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> if that was the case, <laughs> that thing would be listed on eBay right now. I like to like this is this is how back in the day. There's a sticker on the front of this. It's three dollars and fifty cents rebate by mail, so you could you could get three three dollars and fifty cents back. Oh, what's the sale price? Is the sale price still on it? Well, this is fourteen ninety seven. Oh, it's like, but was that original? It looks like a fucking FYE or uh, Suncoast Pictures. Probably. Kmart. How do you know? It says Kmart. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, I have studied barcodes. Yeah. I'm able to detect which is Target and which is Walmart. Yeah, when I see an ISBN number, I'm pretty, I'm pretty on. Yeah, I don't know. I remember really liking this as a kid for the most part. If anything, I didn't like, what I didn't like was Fred's kind of a cocksucker in it. Like, he's an asshole. Fred? Fred Flintstone. Yeah, not really, though. He's re- Dude, he's... But he's just put down his whole life, and all of a sudden he has a chance to, like... Yeah, but he really screws over Barney Plus in the movie. Plus, he's got your uh, Kyle McLaughlin. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's great. And Halle Berry's super hot in this. Probably definitely a... Uh... Yabba, dabba do. Oh, for sure. Man, that's all... And all the, all the all... opening credits, like Steven Spiel, Rocker, and all yeah, that shit. Yeah. All I could think when, uh, when Salma Hayek appears in Desperado, I was I almost out loud went... Awooga! <laughs> just like the mask. Yeah, you couldn't. You really can't. She turns you into a wolf, man. Here's another adaptation. What do we got here? Ah, Dudley Do Right. Do you from, remember this movie? I do remember this. Have you seen it? No. He really was doing this. It's George nuts. of the Jungle. It's out there. That movie. I believe. I remember it. liking it though. I'm sure it's probably pretty good. Alfred Molina as a snidely whiplash, yeah. the villain, and he looks perfect on the yeah. back. And who does a uh, whore for money? Eric Idle play in this. <laughs> I will do any. We could. We should hire him. He could do our intro. Yeah. Hello. Oh, is it Joe Ramoni and Ryan Lanchard? How do you <laughs> pay me? <laughs> yes, Eric. Always look on the bright side of podcasts. I'm sitting here with Ryan Lancello and his co-host <laughs> Joe Ramoni. <laughs> well, this is quite a cast, though. Yeah. You got you got Hit, Brendan, Sarah Jessica Parker, Molina, Eric Idle, Robert Prosky, Alex Rocco. Is he the guy? The guy from Big Lebowski, who's the neighbor. You know what I'm talking about? The, the, yeah. He's in that. Is he? Yeah. 
I want you to come see my cycle, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll be there. Oh, that part's so funny in that. All right, so is it any good, Dudley Do right here? Uh, listeners, you can let us know. I remember it being okay. Hmm. It has a 3.9 out of 10 on IMDb, so I'm going to say it's not good. But uh, one, again, one of those movies where you can appreciate the aesthetic and how they commit to like and replicating were, that style. Like I said, they were doing a lot of like George of the Jungle mm-hmm. and like what's the year on this? Let me see. This here. is ninety nine. Ninety nine. What was that? Ninety four or oh, five? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This probably came out a little too late. Probably. But I, I remember that feeling that when it came out, and I was a little older then. Poor too. Brendan Fraser. He was. Oh, hey, it, he, he turned it around. Now you're familiar with this because I've done a video on it. But that's oh, my Stooge Mania. Stooge Mania unreal there's a few movies Did that I watch this i think no no i think no, it was enough to you just watch you your... it's, it's impossible to sit through there's a few movies i've done on hats off entertainment that i wish i had waited to do until i got just a little bit better at mm. critical analysis mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. my voice in the videos uh and one of them yeah i shot my load prematurely with a stooge mania <laughs> And also with uh, this one, which I could have done a much better analysis of. Oh, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. The Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy in For Love or Mummy, which is a title that just rolls off the fucking tongue. And as you said before, you've got uh, Galliard Sartain. Yeah. And he's playing uh, Oliver, Oliver Hardy. Hardy. And you've got Bronson Pinchon as Stan Laurel. And F. Murray Abraham as... Uh, I was going to make a joke there. I Fuck, I came up with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a uh, a poll quote on the box there? Let me see, on the back or there should be one. It's I know there's one on the back here. This this makes me laugh. Oh no, this isn't a poll quote. It just says it. Kids will love this movie. Right. It's attributed to no one. Yeah, no one. It's, no one has said that quote. No one is saying it. It's, it literally has no one there. That's hilarious to that, me. That is funny as shit. So they thought this movie was going to be fucking huge Why? because uh, remakes of older properties were doing really well at the box office then. Movies like The Flintstones. And uh, oh, okay. What's that? Beverly Hills, Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, that like, was, yeah stuff like that was doing really well. I so liking that. John Cherry, who directed the Ernest movies, mm. Uh, mm. did this, and he they thought it was going to be huge, and uh, it is. You like it? I do like it. You don't like Stooge Mania? I don't like Stooge Mania. Stooge Mania is. They're both shameless. One of them is <laughs> is, is slightly less shameless. It's got this great Drew Struzan poster. I don't too. think it's Drew Struzan, is it? Yes. Is, is it really? Yes, I'm almost certain it is. Oh, yeah, the poster's great. I remember when I saw that, I thought that the movie was just going to be like a uh, compilation, like Josh Mostel hosts a look back at the Stooges' career. It's baffling. And it's, it's just It's really not... baffling. It's absolutely baffling. Then you got Sid Caesar there. Oof. Poor Sid. So there's a funny story behind this VHS tape. We got... Oh, The Odd Couple 2. Okay. I've never seen either. I like... Uh, you like two more? This is, my, this is a guilty pleasure movie of mine that I'll take to my grave. That I fucking... Deutsch? Some kind of wonderful, the great outdoors. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Right, right. A right. lot of stuff. A lot of really great stuff. Really great. So you care. like this more than the first one? <sighs> yeah, that, that's that's like scandalous, though. Well, that, I don't know. It's written by Neil Simon. It's, it's not like it's it's just a great road trip movie. Uh, Felix's daughter is marrying Oscar's son, and the two of them have to travel together to a town in somewhere in California, mm. and hijinks ensue. It's the last movie the two of them made together. I believe it's like Mathel's second to last role. Hmm. I don't know. So the funny story behind this is that Jonathan Silverman, he used to be in a ton of shit. We uh, Christmas time in grade school. I think I was in first grade and the teacher went over. Was like, We're going to the room and you're going to tell us what you want Santa to bring you most of all. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is a true story. And I remember all the kids are saying things like. I want a Nintendo 64, the new Buzz Lightyear game, like all stuff. Like, and I'm like, it's getting to me. I'm like, fuck, I got to think of something really cool. Like, I can't be like, I want a fucking, you know, an action figure. I have to be. And I remember it got to me and I was like, I know. I'm hoping I get the odd couple too. Nothing. No, oh, yeah, correct. No, no, no one even knew how to respond to that. But I like how in my mind, I thought that was cool. <laughs> well, I one, of the, you, one of the biggest bombs. I think to you, it was, it probably seemed adult too, in and a sense. Santa, Santa did bring it to me. But as you can tell from the sticker on the back, it was uh, bought and used from Blockbuster. So I guess Santa uh, that year was a little frugal. I think my parents are probably like, what the fuck does he want this for? Huge flop, though? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, everyone hates it. Huge flop. I, don't, I haven't seen this movie in years. So this is one I feel like someone has been saying, like, you guys got to do Yahoo! Serious movies. Young Einstein, I think, is one that really gets put up. But you have Mr. Accident here. Yeah. No. I've seen neither of these films. I th- this, this movie I remember seeing, and it is fucking insane. Yeah? It is, it is one of the most bizarre films I've ever seen. Because he is, 
It's got a 4.3 on IMDb, by the way. It's a very clumsy man and his UFO-obsessed girlfriend discover a plan made by his boss to market eggs laced with nicotine. It is insane. I'll never forget the Simpsons joke when they go to Australia and there's a Yahoo Serious Film Festival and Lisa just goes, I know what those two words mean, but together, like it's something like that. She can't figure it out. He also sued the website Yahoo because he claimed they were taking his name hmm. right, unsuccessfully. And hmm. then he faded into obscurity, never to be heard from again. He made, I believe, three movies, uh, Young Einstein, Reckless Kelly, and Mr. Accident was his last movie in 2000, as it stands was his last time in a movie. Do you like this? As a kid, I, I thought it was the, the greatest thing. It's probably like the pest. You know, it's like one of those high concept sure. comedies. Do you know what I used to always confuse him with? A movie I really like, but it's Rick Mayall. It's Drop oh, Dead Fred. Yeah. I Very similar. I fucking loved that movie as a kid. I thought that was the funniest fucking movie on the planet, and it probably holds up. It probably does. And also, Rick uh, good, Phoebe uh, Cates, right? <sighs> Can't go wrong there. This isn't really shocking, but I just love this movie because of the poster. They included the... I loved these movies as a kid. The, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But they include the... Uh, oh, Tummy Trouble. Is on it. The Roger Rabbit short. Very cool. You gotta love the, the movie that includes the short. I loved these movies, and then I think I was 10... When I went to Disney World and they had a whole Honey, I Shrunk the Kids like thing, I, was the, I thought it was the cool, because everything's huge, just like giant Lego pieces and like, you know, you're walking through a yard or something and it's, you know, a giant bugs. Yeah, I loved, I thought these movies were excellent. I, you know, kids liked Rick Moranis. These were good, man. Speaking who, who directed of, Oh, Joe Johnson? Joe Johnson. I did not know that. Wait, did... I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. I know On he did Joe Johnston? Yeah, he didn't... Who the fuck did Dial Destiny? Uh, James Mangold. Ah, it should okay. have been Joe Johnston because Joe Johnston did um, the remake of The Wolfman, which I think is an okay movie. Captain America too. He right? did the Captain America yeah. and he did The Rocketeer, which is a movie I'm committing to doing on this show because right. I fell in love with it. I watched it a few months Hell ago yeah. All and right. I fell in love with it. Good stuff. Speaking of things we've done on the show. Uh, good old Popeye. Now, you watched my video. Did it Did it uh, entice you to be uh, reappraise Popeye at all? No, I think I have the correct appraisal. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm a little harsher on it than you, but it's a marvel of set design. Mm -hmm. All the actors are good. It's yeah. just got a bad script, and the idea of like doing the songs live and stuff is so stupid. There's a few again. We t I've I heard someone said this. I don't know if it was you in your video or someone said it. they said the, the songs play much better on the soundtrack. Yes, someone like if you just look, in the comments, yeah. like they're really good. Where they're almost airless a little bit in the movie. That was a shocking thing too, because I've I, when I was doing research for the video, I found the um I was going through the demo, and like. You think there was too many songs, like there were 17 songs he composed, and it was just, like they were all, because then I listened to our episode when I was doing my video, and uh, yeah, you were just like, that was how we started off, by you being like, I thought the soundtrack sucked, and uh, you know, you're not wrong, it's not a, it's not a great... With the exception of like, and it's like, it's it's very much because Punch Drunk Love is in my top 10, right? and I think it's it's an amazing utilization of He Needs Me. And it's a great song. It's a really good song, and she sings it beautifully. Well, one of my, one of my friends I've made through the Hats Off stuff, he owns a... The company Rock and Pins, which they're great, but he has like distribution or he does screenings with of the original Fleischer cartoons, the original Popeye stuff like that. Yeah, they're awesome. And uh, he just did an event with Tom Kenny, voice of SpongeBob. I saw that. Is that that video I saw? Yeah. Dude, that looked awesome. Yeah, yeah he I does mean, a lot of stuff with like. What's the name of that band? I don't know the name of the band, but they, they had were, a really cool They did name. a live event where they were showing the old cartoons and Tom Kenny, who um, I think he's done Popeye voice at some point in I a probably. video game or something. Uh, and he got up and they played. Uh, he needs me live, and it was it sounded cool. It, was it like, did sound very good. You know what's so funny about Tom Kenny? He's obviously you know really known for SpongeBob, but he'll always be one of my favorite, uh, you know, cast members of Mister Show. He was so funny at, on it. He's a good voice actor, and it's like, a good him, Jay Johnston, and uh, I always thought John Ennis was really funny on Mister Show, and he didn't get a big career. It always kind of bummed me out. But those three, I fucking love those guys, man. Three Stooges in orbit. And they almost look, the aliens look Frankenstein-ish almost. <laughs> Do they not? They have like a there Frankenstein head a little bit here. What? I have, this is not one I've seen. Oh, is that, who is this? That's Curly Joe Dorita. The Philly guy. Philly, Philly local. Mm. That's, that. no, this one's about the uh, 1962. So they were, they're up there. This is from 62? Yeah. They were making them in 62? They went till the 70s. Did they? Yeah. Work? I did not know that. I probably did. It just, you know, you, you see the shit in black and white yeah. and you associate the Stooges with a certain era. They were doing it that fucking long. My God. Yeah. And this one, the, the you know, the space craze was on space craze. So they, uh, yeah. 
they they battle aliens in their feature length. Now, who's your least favorite curly stand? -in? Dorita. Is it? Yeah. I, it used to be Besser. I, used to, I thought Besser was the worst. But now, and my reappraisal in watching them is that at least Besser was bothering to do a character, whereas Dorita was just fat and smoked cigars. I'm going to go, don't hit me there, buddy boy. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> How long is this one? Is right. it shorter? Yeah, it's an hour and 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah. I, don't, I love the Stooges, but... 90 minute Stooge movie? No, and you know what? That great, there's a great drive in theater near uh, New York, upstate Pennsylvania, <clears throat> near upstate Pennsylvania, that they were doing a Three Stooges double feature, and they had a. They, rather than, they should have just done a bunch of shorts. They, uh, yeah. they did this and have Rocket Will Travel, it's called. And it's like, please don't show the Three Stooges <laughs> movies. All right, what's up next? Going Berserk with John Candy. Uh, and we also got Joe Flaherty and Eugene Levy, three hilarious guys. Is this any good? Directed by David Steinberg. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it in a really long time. I this. They, I mean, this movie is your your cream dream. You would think. You would think. You would think it's three of my SCTV guys like doing like a Marx Brothers slash Three Stooges type I thing. This. I love the back. Directed by comic talent David Steinberg. What? Like what? A, you got these old VHS copies. Oh, they, they really had to sell them. The copy they wrote for these is hilarious, though. Oh my god! So I could go on. Uh, is um, it? It's just, I don't know. It's just, I remember it not landing. It's just it's like they don't really know how to play. John Candy is the straight man in it. He's the one that's like centered and grounded and real, and the other two are like the wacky friends. What's the what's the thing here? He plays a chauffeur that like gets hypnotized to kill his fiance's father or something. Hmm. It's very weird. It's just it's very early for all of them. Like I don't think they had really done much film. I like this. Featuring such comedy character actors as Paul Dooley, Richard Lee Libertini. Oh, shit. And Bill. Two Popeye. Uh... But you know how sometimes like, they'll be like, they'll say, oh, this character was in a movie. On right, the, right. Like parenthet parenthet parenthetical. Yeah. Bill, and this is parenth parentheses, <laughs> you doesn't have to call me Mr. Johnson, parentheses, Saluga. What the fuck? Is Here, that a Canadian? What, like, Bill Saluga. But what? Why? Paul Dooley. That, he has to be a, a stand-up or something, and that was his bit. Oh, oh, yeah, you're probably totally right. You're, it's Bill, you know. They, they're, you doesn't have to call me Mr. Johnson Saluga. Oh, my God. Look him up. It's a bit. You're right. Yeah, Bill Saluga. Oh, he's fucking, what's his name? No, I just drank into the mic. I'm sorry, guys. That's I right. I hate that. Uh, <laughs> I hate that, the swallow noise in a mic. It's so gross. He appeared on several television programs, including Seinfeld. It's like, I remember there's a great Family Guy bit where like it's like a fake blue collar comedy thing and it's paul coffee and cake abernathy it's something like that yeah 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 uh let's see so it's uh, he's on three episodes of curb your Enthusi enthusiasm playing lewis lewis which sounds familiar oh is he that little guy i thought he was father guido uh upon uh, looking at him yeah he does have that look a little bit look at this one i got a, a double Oh boy, I haven't seen this. this is a deer hunter. I've never seen it. And this was so intimidating when you had two yes. tapes. You were like, I can't, yeah. I can't sit through this. A pro just an amazing movie. I'll tell, I'll tell Ama this amazing, beautiful film. I haven't seen it, but I'm going to watch it soon. It's funny. You're going to be, I think, a little bored. It could not hit that time and place in Pittsburgh better. Yeah. It's you had it's like you wouldn't. I don't know, man. It's so the reason that it's familiar in my head right now is because. Uh, I decided to watch Jaws 2 finally mm -hmm. because I was like, how bad can it be? It's bad. Is it? Um, but apparently, uh, what's his name? Roy Schneider was supposed to be the Robert De Niro character in this. Okay. And pulled out like a week before filming. And Universal was so pissed. They were like, you have to do another film for us then. Like, you have to be in Jaws 2 then. And he's, he had to do it. So he was oh, like wow. miserable the whole time. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. But he didn't get, a, he didn't get along with the director or, or someone and backed out of the movie and... They forced him to be in the Jaws. I could see it. I don't think Samino was, he had his, you know, his uh, peculiarities. This is an interesting, this is the first time I ever remember seeing special features, and it's on a VHS tape. Yeah, special edition on the top of this. And and this look at is, the, let me see the year here. It was uh, 97 it came out, That's I when they would have started doing this kind of crap. see the black thing under the title? It says, what, 17 minutes? Exclusive 17 minutes. I've never seen 4G. This is the, the, the it's being the movie, by the way. Uh, this is what, made me so interested i do so much work on hats off about lost and deleted scenes it was this this started it oh yeah because my best friend growing up anthony shout out he loved 
any movie that had to do with uh, like disaster or airplane. Like he loved Turbulence and the Poseidon Adventure, sure. but also loved Mr. Bean. So I remember one year after Christmas, we were, I was over his house, like, oh, what'd you get? And he was like, I got this. And I was like, you know, me as a kid, huge Mr. Bean. I'm like, exclusive 17 minutes of never before. And I was like, I ha- where'd you get it? I have to go. So I went and bought it at Suncoast. Pictures had it. Would they charge you $40 Probably for Probably back it? then. God, and I, they and, were um, expensive. It's not even like, of course, they made like a little documentary before. It, it, it Seriously, is the precursor to Hats Off. And it's the director, Mel Smith, the late Mel Smith, who played um, the cabbie in Brain Donors, the, the Scottish English guy. Sure. He's the director of this. It's Rowan Agatson. And they discuss some of the gags that didn't make it in the movie, showing them out of context. And they're not quite work print, but they're not finished. And I was, it blew my mind that, <laughs> wait, movies have like, Stuff that's not in the movie. It's so weird when you when you have those realizations as a kid because you just think they, almost movies come out like ready made. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way there's something I wanted to touch on with that bean thing. Oh, it's I saw a comment from someone the other day online somewhere. Who fucking knows? But they were like, it blew my mind when I grew up because as a kid I thought there was like seasons and seasons. It felt like there were seasons of Bean. There's 15 episodes. Yeah, like, and they're all like really short. Uh huh. All right, here's three sealed ones, but I'm going to look up the price of them and see if we got any gems on our hands okay, here. Dead Poet Society, I have a feeling, in a sense, doesn't hold up. It's a good movie, but, like, it's a little... The story is... Okay. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. Oh. But it's Peter Weir, and you can't go wrong with Peter Weir. Mm-hmm. Also filmed director. in Wilmington. Oh, uh, was it? That's where the school was, yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's one of those movies. I think I saw this for the first time when I had... I got into a skiing accident. I was in the hospital for a long time, and I think I watched this when I was in there. Then I was ready to uh, carpe diem, get the fuck out of there. Uh, you have another one here? Good Morning Vietnam. I haven't seen this in years. I remember being not bad. All right. Well, so far, the Dead Poets Society is not worth shit. Mm. Uh, what about Good Morning, Good Morning Vietnam. Vietnam? I remember this being pretty good. I don't know. I saw it when I was a kid. So Barry Levinson's a weird guy. He's made a lot of good movies, but he seems to not get his due for whatever reason. Up. Oh. There's one going for a dollar ninety nine sealed. See what, what what were you saying that was expensive? There, it, it, it's happening. Trust me. Okay, that one might be worth something. Well, hold on. This might be. We have the Blazing Saddles VHS here. Is that, now is that like a commemorative special edition, or is it look? Is there a date on it? Let me see here. Well, there's uh, seventy four for the movie. Eighty eight. It's probably worth nothing. Or I'm sorry, ninety eight. Ninety eight. Yeah, it's not good for shit. Yeah, fourteen ninety five. Yeah, well, you know, not really. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I was hoping I had some gems in here. Well, you never know. Not this one. But yeah, Blazing Saddles, classic. Very good. You ever see this movie? Warriors of Virtue. This is one of those movies where you're like, you think back and you go, was that a, did I have a dream or yeah. was that a movie? Because this is the one where like he falls into like a drain thing. Yes. And goes to like the I kang- think, kangaroo I think it was ninja like, world. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is really popular at the uh-huh, time and they're uh-huh. like, Kangaroos, yeah, Japan. Yup, it was kind of cool. I used to love it, and it I had the action kind figures of good. too. Yeah, and directed by Ronnie Yu. Can you look that up? He's he's a um, I think like I almost feel like he was like, like a stunt man, a right? flight coordinator. Yeah. I want to say Ronnie Yu. Ronnie Yu. Uh, Why Yu? Yes. Uh. Oh. He might have been, but he's he's like um, like here's some of his directing: Warriors of Virtue, Bride of Chucky, Freddy vs. Jason. Okay, maybe he was just one of them guys. He though. might have been. He might have been like a second unit kind but, of guy. Um, yeah, this was a really interesting movie. Yeah, uh, it's, practical it's, effects. Yeah, it's weird. It was. I remember seeing it. Was, it's kind of uh, good. What is this? There's there's things little, on the inside. Yeah, a little Brian. insert in here. I want. I'll go through these since you read the case. Uh, it's toy time on CD-ROM. Enter a magical world with a new CD-ROM Babes in Toyland, an interactive adventure. To order today, to call. <laughs> they want twenty nine ninety five. And then on the back, get ready for some hot dog and fun on CD-ROM. All dogs go to heaven. Activity center. Wait, can I see this? This toy time thing looks familiar. Yeah, it was the Babes in Toyland animated movie. Uh, uh, ugh. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. Man, these early CD-ROM games. Holy shit. A little trip down nostalgia lane. Oh, look at this, Ryan. It's a coupon for Continental Airlines. All right. Are they still around? Continental? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, and here's an ad for the action figures. That's, that's, that's kind of cool. With this one, you can order them. Get a free Warriors of Virtue action figure uh, if you... S- oh, it's only 3 dollars Ryan. You just had to pay shipping and handling. 
So many weird deals like that back in the day, man. Do you think they would uh, they would honor this? That's what I'm saying. I wonder if you could still. Is there a phone number? or Is it just a, a, an address? An address somewhere in California. So I would call it right now if we had a number. Damn it, we don't. Okay, this is. I always grab this because they don't they don't make oh, shit Jesus like this Christ. anymore. Oh, look at this. Cool. The Thin Man. The Thin Man box I've only set. seen the first one. I, I, I really liked it. I like the Plus, second one. Myrna Louis. James Stewart. Myrna Louis hot. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's hot. I'm also a huge William. I love William. Oh, Powell. yeah, he's good too. And what's the dog's name? Do you remember? Uh, Asta. Hey, there you go. Critics' Choice Video, the box, which is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, I guess huh? they just packaged. They may have just. Should I call that number? I think it would work. There's a number on this box. Let's see. I'll put my phone on speaker. Ask them if they have the Thin Man VHS box set and store still in stock. Let's see here. My phone's on 1%, so let's see if this works. Thank you for calling Critics Choice Video. If you would like to place an order, please press 1. Hit 1. I can't believe the number worked. I'm dude. I almost fell out of my seat. I think there's. I think they're the company that always sends me those catalogs. Remember I showed you once. Yeah. Just be telling you an elderly person trying to get a VHS yeah. tape. Wait, there's five or six movies here. I'll go. Do you have the seventh? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. This is going no. I can't believe there's even a number though. All right, well, I'm going to hang up, but the fucking number worked. Unbelievable. Yeah, the Thin Man all on a, Let me pull one of these out here. Cool. Have you watched, like, the whole series? Uh, I haven't seen the last, like, two. They any good, or is it just kind of more of the same as it goes it on? It starts to just get... I will say this. The book, the first Thin Man book by Dashiell Hammett yeah. is great. It's yeah, excellent. I, I, I it's very it. witty. It makes you want to just drink martinis in a New York penthouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is another one of these rare, um, like, weird demo tapes or something. Oh, uh, okay, This yeah. is a gift from friend of the show, Ryan Downey. He gave me this once. Watch the crowd-pleasing $25 million comedy today. That was a good haul back in the day. 25 million. For mil. a fucking Sinbad comedy. That's yeah. House Guest. House Guest? I remember this being okay. As it's a, okay. As a kid. Yeah, and that, I think that's Phil the... Phil Hartman. That's the tape they would use to, like, play in the VHS store. Maybe, like, to show the distributors if they wanted to order copies of it. I don't know. I think you're 100% right. But kind of cool it survived and it's out there. And Hey, if you didn't know, I love how they're giving him credits. The Outrage is Sinbad from A Different World and The Sinbad Show. Well, who, 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 who could have guessed? I remember watching Sinbad. I, Sinbad was big. He was good. I've never seen this, but it's, it's always enticed me. How have you not seen I just, this? I, it's like, you know what? Sometimes you just don't want to, you don't want to find out. Yeah. You, want, you want to leave the mystery. Now, it has an A&E thing. Is this a TV It was movie? a TV okay. film. Okay, it's Gene Wilder, Murder in a Small Town. And also, is, there's a picture of a man on the back there. Can you see who that is? In and, and a fedora? I can't place you, him. You Why? Can, you, you know who it is. I'm just going to read it. Oh, it's Mike Starr. Yeah, he, Mike he Starr's looks in it. looks older there for yeah, some reason. Play, playing a heavy. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, maybe it's all right. Well, oh, it's it, written by Gene. It must have been all right because uh, there's a second one. Oh, look at that. The Lady in Question, a Cash Carter mystery. I think you should watch these. Yeah. I can't I don't believe have a you fucking haven't. VCR anymore. Mine you, broke and now I have to These are on YouTube. I'll bet you a billion dollars. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Mike Starr's back. That's cool. Now, this might make a great pick on the show, right? Jesus, dude. He, we are, the table is covered in these things now. Uh, Song of the South. Do you realize how much I watched this when I was a kid? The movie itself, or just the the song of uh, it might have been Zippity Doodah. Yeah, yeah, dude, uh, this they're so stupid. They are. Just bring it back. And not only that, didn't they change Splash Mountain's name or something? It's yeah, it's getting rethemed, but that's not. It has nothing to do with that. That's, the problematic history of that movie. It's just because they're they, they want to stay relevant, and they're going to hide behind the fact that. Sure. No, you're right. That's so stupid. But though. also, uh, it's worth pointing out that. The actor there, I'm going to pull, get his name in a second, James Baskett, yeah. uh, did win an Academy Award for that yeah. performance. So, so I guess we really, better historically bury it then. Just God a, forbid. Just a great, great character actor. Not only that, like the Br'er Rabbit story I loved. But it was weird because he didn't win one for the movie. They gave him an honorary Oscar that year mm. for the movie. Or like the next year, recognized his performance. I don't know. It's I mean, very weird. It's but got Hattie McDaniel in it too, who won for... Gone with the Wind. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, it's a fucking bootleg. What do you expect? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember this happening. Uh, 
a lot of bootlegs selling in the early in the I remember internet. You you don't have to. My my we when I was a kid we found out of at a convention some guy was selling bootleg copies. I was like, oh, song of the south. <laughs> and uh, I remember he said, "This is what the quote the guy said." Yes, it comes from a Japanese print. The only difference is during the songs there's Japanese subtitles because the Japanese like to sing along. <laughs> and you're thinking, how the fuck is that possible? It's not the, the lyrics wouldn't be correct to what they're saying on screen. You make a good point. I what don't is know. he talking about? They um, would sing it in Japanese. It's also so nice when they clearly upscaled the the VHS cover oh, to I try know. to fit it's around the so DVD. So funny, dude! I cannot tell you how zippity doo was in my head as a kid, probably a hundred percent of the time. Now we've talked about. Did your parents have movies when you were a kid? Like you had your own movies and your parents had a collection. My parents weren't. They liked movies, but they weren't like movie people. They weren't either. But my parents had like a collection, and this was one you can tell from the box. Like this was an adult movie. Oh, God. You know, I've never seen this. I might really, be one for the show. I really should watch it because I really like Eric Roberts, but we have The Pope of Greenwich Village. I love this movie. Yeah? I do. I'll have to watch it. It was one of those movies I detested as a kid because, again, it was a, one of my parents' movies. Right. So I was like, that movie sucks by just association of the fact that my parents like it. Right. Yeah. And Mickey, I wa- Mickey Rourke, Eric Roberts. I got to watch I watched this. It. You know who convinced me to give it a second look? Dice Clay. I heard Dice Clay doing an interview where yeah. he talked about it. And I was like, fuck, I'll, I'll check it out. And I watched it and I was like, Especially you, we've talked about doing movies about like two guys involved in a scheme and yeah. something goes wrong. It's constantly really good. Okay, cool. I'll, and uh, I, I recently found a DVD of it. So if you ever want to borrow it, let me know. Hell yeah. Pope of Greenwich I Village. I, I think will, it's out of print. Yeah. I will. Oh, is it? Yeah. Kind of a well regarded movie. This might be one we can do in the show. This oh. is another DVD. Oh, boy. Another Pinocchio? I couldn't believe this is the Roberto Benini one. I couldn't believe when this was coming out that he was doing this. It makes sense from a. Italian perspective. Does that make sense to me? Yeah. As an American, I'm like, why is this grown man dancing around in a Pinocchio thing? Like, it's Italians just... have a weird relationship with that story. Like, they're almost willing to forgive. Yes, it's the, like norms because now I, 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 I really don't know. Is it an Italian kind of yes. folk? Yes, it is. It is okay. It didn't come from Disney or anything. No. This is an all okay. Cool. Then that makes kind of sense. And this was absolutely an Italian movie that got dubbed, from what I remember. Yes, and you know who voices him in the dub version? I see if it's on there. It's uh, Brecken. Yeah, it is. is it Brecken yeah. Meyer? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's someone. There were some other weird names. They're not. There's on also here. that that Geppetto movie. With... Oh wait, 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 here we go. Brecken Meyer, Glenn Close, Queen Latifah, Hey Hey, Jimmy Belushi, Regis Philbin, John Cleese, Eddie Griffin. Guess okay, okay. There's a lot of here's a clue. Money whores in this movie. Who's next? Eric Idle. Eric Idle. <laughs> And our old buddy. Ah, oh, yes. I'm playing the narrator. And thank you for checking out Pinocchio. And then right after that, you got, hey, man, it's me, Cheech. Is Cheech in it? Cheech, right? Oh, my he God. rounds out the Man, cast. these guys are really. Now, that was a huge hit in Italy. Huge. And that's why, that's really why they brought it over, I remember. And it couldn't have flopped. And you know who bought it over? What company? Uh, let me guess. Is it a certain fat man who might be in a jail cell at the uh, moment? It would be Miramax Films. Mm. And you know what makes it all the better is how much money went into the marketing for this movie in, in the States that they, the Miramax thought this was going to be a fucking, they not only did, because it's a special feature, the windows of Pinocchio, FAO Schwartz holiday windows in New York. So those big window displays, they did it that McDonald's had a tie in. Well, he's coming off life is beautiful. Coming off life so, is beautiful. Yeah. Which you've seen. Yeah. I've never seen the whole it's thing. Great. Isn't it weird how it really is the day the clown cried? It is. Yeah. It's a much better... Isn't that weird, it, though? He, Jerry Lewis had to be pissed about that. Oh, he had to be fucking livid. How is that not a ripoff? I mean, he's not, he's a, not, he's a not clown. literally a clown. He's not leading children sure. of their deaths in the, the gas chambers. So has that been released, or what's the story there? Uh, coming out soon. <laughs> there, we were waiting for Jerry Lewis to yes. die. Apparently, someone has the rights for it. We he, will be covering he, that. He gave it to a Library of Congress or someone he gave the negative to. I so, bet you it's... Can Harry, you imagine if it's like fucking held as one of the greatest films I've ever famously made? Famously, Harry Shearer said it's not. I know, but just can you imagine I, what, that would do, I, what that would fucking do to him in his grave if I, it was like held as like a fucking incredible piece of art? I bet you it's not as bad. I really, though, hope he's doing like nutty professor type like... With the guest chambers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dean was a very bitter man. <laughs> He was very jealous of my success. <laughs> I like old Jerry. I like That's when good. Jerry would just like shit on everybody he ever worked with. He was a real prick. I love it, you man. Know, Johnny Caution wasn't talented. <laughs> There's a movie we recently talked about. I just love that cover. Oh, you don't see laws. covers like that anymore. Yeah, real stupid kind of cheesy uh, early Photoshop almost. 
like you know <laughs> Microsoft that, Paint level. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, this was funny though, man. Funny movie. You know what I forgot to mention? When he does that towards the end, it's the in laws, by the way. Yeah, the in laws. We didn't even say it. When he jumps onto the car. Oh yeah, that's so, really well really done. Yeah. No, looks, is it? I think it is. No, I think they do a very, very, a very good job of clever uh, obstruction there with him and the stunt man. And I was like, oh damn, that was that was uh, filmed well. I'm Alan Arkin. I'll do my own stunts. We talked about this recently, and you were uh, like, "Is that yeah, good?" Ghost Town. I actually like this movie. Oh, you know who wrote oh, and directed I'm a, it? I'm is in a uh, town of ghosts. David Kep wrote and directed it. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, so they wrote it with John Cass, but yeah. David Kep. I didn't. I would have figured Ricky did something with the writing with this. I guess not. David Kep is not. He's all right. He, he just did something recently. He's got something coming out. He's always working though. He's one of those top guys. This is. I want to show you this because there's men. a disclaimer on the box of this that I've never seen before. So this is a sealed copy of Laurel and Hardy and the Big Noise. And it's when uh, I was going to make a fart. Yeah, joke. don't even. Yeah, no. Okay. You see that thing that's like in the a yellow box, kind of. Made during World War II, this Laurel and Hardy, uh, it's a little, this Laurel and Hardy film reflected the wartime attitude against waste and destruction. The two comedians proclaimed The Big Noise, their first non-destructive film in 177 pictures. It contains no pie throwing, clothes ripping, or furniture busting. That's interesting. You know what they're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Hmm. Is it any good? It's one of their better later movies. Okay, they're, cool. They're not many, but that one's okay. I like how they look here. Mm-hmm. They look... Uh, they stopped... Fox, when they started making movies for Fox, they Fox made them stop wearing, like, pantomime makeup, or, so they look more human. I was going to say, they look like... Yeah. It looks like a normal movie, right. basically. And now here's one that, where they kind of don't. Yeah, but just a cool... Oh, uh, yeah, Way Out West, which I have seen with you, we as we've, we've talked it. about many times. Yeah, they... And, like, look, even they do, like, the old style, like, mm-hmm. the, on the cover, the painting of the face... Yeah, these are all worth checking out. I mean, you know, just even historically. This is from the Nostalgia Merchant, Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, California. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so this is this is the shit that I left at my poor mother's house where I'm like, <laughs> I don't have room for it, but I don't want to get rid of it. And there's a lot more where this came from. This is just, I was downstairs earlier and I was like, let me grab some of it, but maybe we can talk about it. Yeah, interesting. Little... Uh, yeah. Now, little, do you, uh... you don't have anything like this still? No physical media, right? I liquidated a lot of my stuff only because I was broke. And I needed money. You're trying to make your independent films. Dude, really, honestly, right? You were putting money into I some was, stuff. Yeah. Um, I obviously am a big proponent of physical media. I just am a weird, uh, what's the best way to put it, non-material guy. Mm. So I just try not to have anything. It's like to, we mentioned heat earlier. It's like <laughs> when you see the heat around the corner. You got a 20 seconds to leave. It's like, I have nothing. So I, you know, but I've, you know. It's cool. You see these, they've got the, the proof of purchases on them still. That's crazy. Touchdown video. What are they, what was, what were they trying to do there? Yeah. At least to put the sticker, I guess they wouldn't slide out. Hmm. Oh, this is the action figures. You sure you don't want it? Like, that is a fucking... I'm sorry. That's a pretty good deal. You just got to pay shipping and handling, and they would have sent you a free Warriors of Virtue action figure. There was so much of that shit. If you just... And here's what they're banking on. Who's going to take the time to do it? Right. And there was so much of that crap. I used to get stuff off of cereal boxes. I mean, uh, you used to just be able to get free shit. If there you was, like, set... stuff you could bring that into school. Remember that? The box, uh-huh, box uh-huh, tops uh-huh, or something? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I enjoyed this, Joe. Very interesting. Cause... One day, we'll go through my movie stubs. Yes, that'll that's, be a fun one. That's what we definitely should do. That, mm-hmm. which was a great idea, something I wish I would have kept up on when I was a kid. Yeah, a little, a little behind the scenes into uh, where I spent my money growing up. Yeah, cool. What little money I had, I would have to go to the Suncoast Motion Picture. Did company. you buy this? That the... actually was inherited. I had a okay. uh, a great uncle who I was, was uh, pointing to the Thin Man box, uh, a huge movie fan. And when he, upon dying, I got to go clean out his apartment as a kid. That was like an exciting thing. It was nice. like this old mysterious uncle, and he had a shit ton of old movies on VHS: Laurel and Hardy stuff, Three Stooges. And uh, my dad was like, oh, look at these, the Thin Man movies. You'll like these. And we took them home, and I was like, these suck. These are so boring and terrible. And then, like, of course, years later, I fell in love with them. And, yeah. But yeah. Very cool, man. Well, thanks for, uh, if, you, if you're checking out this episode, thanks for sticking with us. I yeah. think that was fun. I hope Critics uh, Choice Video calls you back. We could, we oh, could. F- yeah, we should really try to call them again. Remember that. That would be fun. I cannot believe that I heard that. That, that really blew my mind. But. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for indulging me in my uh, my little VHS collection. We'll do something like this maybe in the future. Look forward to it. All right. Until All right. next time. Yeah, thanks for listening.